We are in the season of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is risen. He is risen. He wasn't risen. He is risen. He remains risen. And being risen is a form of soaring. Just to tap into the theme scripture uh, that this year we are riding along in order for all of us to experience soaring. Amen? Jesus is risen. Jesus is experiencing soaring. And today, I want to focus on the condition that preceded his soaring. So that if we too can observe the same, um, then we too can experience soaring in our own way. And so I've dubbed my message today, Soaring Through Submission. Soaring Through Submission. And I'll be reading two passages of scripture in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, I'll be reading um, at our theme scripture for this year, Isaiah 40, verse 31. And in the New Testament, I'll be reading Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Those two passages of scripture bring out the precondition to our soaring. To remain reason, even as Jesus is reason. If you would, I would ask each of us just to stand for the word, even as I read these two passages of scriptures. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, the Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, the Bible says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You may have your seats. I've titled my message, Soaring Through Submission. And actually it's our theme for our youth month. And we've been delving in many areas uh, just to understand what it is, um, submission, what submission entails. Submission can be defined simply as the act of allowing someone or something to have power over you. The act of allowing someone or something to have power over you. It is yielding yielding yourself to the dictates of an authority or something or situation or condition to have power over you. And so if we forget everything, we should remember yielding and we should remember that we are giving somebody or something power over us. And in that state, we will be submitted. You see, many times, many times, we tend to focus on the glory and pay little attention on the story that precedes and actually occasions the glory that we celebrate. Amen? The only reason why we celebrate Easter and celebrate Jesus' resurrection is because Jesus submitted in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember that time? When he uttered those powerful words, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus could have, in fact, his struggle was he was God in flesh and also in spirit. He was 100% God as man and as spirit at that time. And that's why he was wrestling with himself. He's saying, God, is there another way? Is there another way apart from going through the way of the cross? And he was agonizing. But he, we thank God that he submitted to the will of the Father. And he went the way of the cross. And because of that, the Bible says there is no other name in heaven or on earth. And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is what? In fact, we have that superscription up here. 
Jesus is what? Jesus is Lord. And throughout this passage, of, um, as, as I share the someone, I would want us to ask ourselves, is he? Is he Lord in our lives? Because there's something I've seen in the passage that we've just read in Isaiah 40 and verse 31. The first part of it speaks saying, but they that wait upon the Lord. I want to bring out two Two words there that suggest submission. One is waiting. Whenever you're waiting, you are patiently waiting or doing so in submission. Amen? Amen. But again, the Bible doesn't say, they that wait upon a parent, upon a sister, upon a friend. No, if you are reading from the text, um, the version, King James we are waiting upon who? The Lord. And the Lord is in capitals. Just to distinguish, just in case somebody uh, confuses, we are not talking about a landlord. <laughs> We're talking about the Lord. Amen? And lordship dictates or commands submission in its subjects or servants. Amen? Amen? And so this is the precondition before now you enjoy what? The renewing of your strength and the mounting up on wings as what? As egos. That was the precondition. Before there be any crown, there must be what? A cross. And this is something I saw in this passage of scripture and that's why I dubbed my message Soaring through submission. There isn't any other way. Guys, if you want to sow this year, and all of us are waiting to sow up and mount on wings as eagles in our various um, respects, in our own areas, we will do that by first observing the precondition of what? Submission. And so I just want to share a little bit of what submission is give two illustrations of what submission is. And then thereafter, I will point out some areas that we need to submit. And this will not be an exhaustive list. But I pray that at the end of it, we will have known which areas will demand submission. And then I will also point out limitations to submission, because we just don't submit to anything. Like I've just mentioned, you submit to the Lord not any other thing. And then lastly, there are some rewards and promise to submission. Amen? The U.S., um, the most top military elite group in the U.S. Navy is called SEAL, the Navy SEALs. It's the most top um, elite military force in the U.S. They have a saying that illustrates submission. And they say that many people, I'll just paraphrase it, that many people want to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. Many people want to go to heaven, but no one wants to do what? To die. The precondition to getting to heaven is death. And in many ways, even us, we want to attain soaring or the blessings of God, but no one wants to pay the price of submission. And that's like cheating yourself to heaven. And so today, I want to speak both at once as give an instruction, but also as an encouragement to many of us who are on this journey to wait on God in order for us to sow. To me, submission um, is bowing down to Christ in order to be tall enough to touch heaven. That for me is submission. Bowing down in Christ in order to be tall enough to touch heaven. And my prayer is that even as I share this message, we will be able to appreciate and observe submissions in the various areas that God will be calling us. Remember, God is who? Lord. He's not just a friend. He's not a brother. 
But he is Lord. At the end of the day, he demands and requires submission. And so many of us may want to experience soaring this year. I pray that we will fulfill the precondition to soaring, which is what? Submission. There are two illustrations that um, I would want to share just for us to appreciate what submission is. One is the life of the ego. The ego is a very interesting bud. Um, it, it can live more than many buds. In fact, um, um, science has it that it can go to between 35 years to around 60 years. That's a bud. And the way it does that, it, when it reaches half of its age, when it's fully battered and it's old, it renews its strength. And then it takes that um, traditional flight that is usually referred to as the flight of rebirth, where it renews itself and mounts on wings as egos. That's where Isaiah is quoting and using that metaphor from there. But what precedes its soaring is a painstaking process, which involves plucking of its feathers. All of it. It plucks. You know, it's plucking. It's not um, removing them nicely. It's plucking. It also breaks its beak. You know, it's beak, the, the, the material that uh, makes the beak is the same that um, makes your, your nails. You can imagine breaking your nails. And it's talons. But imagine if it doesn't do that, it will die. Because it depends on its sharpness of its beak to eat its prey. Because most of these preys have hides and skins. So it will need that sharpness of its beak and it has to be sharp when it's renewed. So you can imagine, it has to break, it has to break these things in order for it to wait upon the Lord and pour out some oil so that feathers can start growing again. The beak starts coming out again. And then when all that is said and done, it mounts up on wings as a new birthed ego. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29, Jesus also illustrates this by saying, And if thy, thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. I wonder what is, it is that God, as the Lord and Savior of our lives, is demanding for us to pluck out of our lives in order for us to realize soaring. And we have to do this in submission. It is plucking. It is going to be a painful experience, but in submission. But the other um, illustration to just illustrate submission is that of pregnancy. Many of us are familiar with pregnancy. Amen? I think for us, me and my wife, we experienced this like 12 years ago. That was the last time she, um, she, she was glorious. But pregnancy is a form of submission. Amen? And those who are expectant will know that you will have to observe diet. You will have to observe the type of wardrobe and the clothing you put on. But also you will have to endure what I call mood swings, morning sicknesses, all that the expectant woman has to submit to it so as to able to carry the pregnancy to term and experience the soaring which is in the form of Delivering a baby. Amen? In fact, I vividly remember the last, the last one. Even me, I submitted, you know. For men, for men who have gone through that process, you know, she, she starts transfiguring. You always say, man, you are looking good. Ni transfiguration ya Yesu. 
But this is what I had to endure. That's why I'm saying it's her diet. Angefika pali and inambie, honey, you know what? Ebu ni taftie supu. And so, mwanaume unapambana na hali yake, unaenda inje, unatafta supu. Then immediately you bring it. And it's like, sipendi yo arufu. <laughs> Unataka nini? Chocolate. Ay, okay. But you have to do what? Submit. Because she is carrying something that is so beautiful. And even all of us right now, if God was to show you your soaring, that which you need to deliver this year, it's something beautiful. But all of us will have to do what? Submit to the dictates of our pregnancy. All of us are waiting in earnest to deliver that which God has placed in each and every one of us. And my prayer is that we learn how to submit. Submission is a choice. And I pray that you make the right choice. But submitting to God. So I want us just to go through five areas of submission. Five areas of submission. And um, I believe this is not an exhaustive list. But this is something that God put on my heart just to share with all of us so as to appreciate what are some of the prerequisites or preconditions to our soaring. Number one, we need to submit to God-ordained seasons of our lives. Amen? You know there are some seasons that you will go through in life that it doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you bind the enemy, or what you do, there is a season that has been set, a God-ordained season. Because in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1, the wise man Solomon says, to everything there is what? A season. Not to some things. And all of us are included in everything. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Amen? So there are seasons that we are going to experience. These seasons, we need to submit to these seasons. You can imagine if a pregnant woman or an expectant woman decides to say, ah, me, I'm not pregnant. I'll just move on with life and I'll try to vise on my hipsters and I'll try to eat anything. The season will show you how Lord it is over your life. Amen? The Israelites, in the text that we are reading, um, um, Isaiah 40 and verse 31, the Israelites were in a season of captivity. And it was 70 years. And God was not going to remove or add anything to that period. They had gotten themselves, and my previous sermon I had shared this, they had gotten themselves to captivity by not observing mainly the, the observance of Sabbath. And for the many years that they were living in this land, they had not observed God's Sabbath. And God said what? I'm going to take you to captivity and spend exactly the number of years that you ignored my Sabbath. That's why you see the number 70. And so it didn't matter who was in the favor of the Israelites. That season they had to endure. And even us right now, as we wait on God, there is a season that we must endure. Maybe you are somewhere and you've prayed about a situation, it's not changing. But guess what? You still have peace. You haven't given up. My word today is submit to that season. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, the latter part of it, it says, and a time to every purpose under heaven. There's a time set. You will not be there forever. A time will come after your submission, you will be what? Exalted. So there is a season. Seasons of God are to be endured and not be fought. You know, like believers, all of us are enduring the season called the last days. We are in the last days. It's a season. And you can find this in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. 
The Bible says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That passage of scripture captures Matthew chapter 24. God or Jesus is speaking about the last days. And it's a season. But though those that will endure to the end shall be done what? Saved. And salvation is a form of what? Soaring. And so my encouragement to all of us is that let us submit to the seasons of God. Let us submit to the seasons of God. Don't try to bind them. Don't try to run away. You know there are four seasons um, in the world that we know, especially in Europe. Yeah? There is winter, there is autumn, there is spring, and there is what? Summer. You can imagine if you want to run from a season in Europe to come to Africa to enjoy summer throughout. That is how many of us as Christians, when we are going through facing tough situations, we want to escape from that season. And yet you are built for that season. Amen? It takes sunshine and rain to make flowers grow. Sinukweli? You can just have sunshine and expect flowers to bloom. There needs to be some rain. And so the things that we are going through even right now before we attain our soaring, I pray that we submit to the God-ordained seasons. Number two, we need also to submit to God discipline. The disciplines of God. The disciplines of God. In order for us to soar into the freedom that God has provided for us. Let me quote a passage of scripture in John chapter 8 and verse 31 and verse 32. Many of us quote the latter part and not talk about the precondition of it. Many of us know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall. But did you know there is John 8, 31, which is a precondition that requires you to submit it says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye, now this is the precondition, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you know, your verse in Guinea 32, it starts by, and ye shall know. When you to find English, you have a sentence that you have to and, isn't it? It means there is something before that. There's a pretext before that. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Many of us are bound in some situations right now. And we need deliverance. We need to sow in freedom. I pray that you submit to the disciplines that God has ordained. And you shall experience that freedom. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14, the Bible says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want you to pay attention to the word straight. It's where we get the, 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 the phrase, straight and narrow. I'm on the straight and narrow. But the word there, and again, I will, I will, I will advise or recommend that uh, you, you, you check the word from King James. But it's, it's, it's the first translation that really captures um, some words. The word there is straight. It's not straight as line straight. It is S-T-R-A-I-T. It's the same word that we use with straight jacket. The one that you wrap around mikonos in kama constraints. When you are on the straight and narrow, it means you are confined. You are a disciplined person. There are some things you cannot do. And only when you observe such discipline will you experience what? Heaven or sorry. And many of us would want to sow this year. We need to observe that which God has ordained as discipline, the straightness. Paul, 
in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, while trying to explain discipline, he says, No man warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Soldiers, police, KDF are also referred to as disciplined forces because they observe a code of discipline in order for them to attain the ranks that they are. And so even us, if you want to sow this year, we need to observe God-ordained discipline. There is a promise when you observe certain discipline. And you can find this in the book of Job, chapter 36 and verse 10. Job, chapter 36 and verse 10. The Bible says, He openeth also their ear to discipline, and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Then Job 36, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their ears in pleasure. The book of Job is a wisdom book in that if you want to really understand the ways of God and apply them in order for you to prosper in life, go read the book of Job. And Job is instructing us here that there is a reward to discipline. And even us, we can experience rewards thereafter after we have submitted to the disciplines of God. We've just celebrated um, our students um, having completed their KCPE. And even yesterday we had the announcements of um, KCSE. And many have excelled. Um, well, many, it's relative. Uh, but 16%, I think, um, of, of, of some have have really excelled. But those who have excelled observed discipline around the area of academics. Sinukweli. And because of that, they are now soaring or have scored soaring marks. And the same is with us. We might want to quote that passage of scripture as prophecy of our lives, but if we are not going to observe certain disciplines, well, we will not be able to realize our soaring. Number three, submission to authorities, including the authority of God's word. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God, honor all men, Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to good and gentle, but also to the fraud. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. God has placed many people in the form of leaders, counselors, guides, mentors, instructors on our way to our soaring. And he requires that we submit to these authorities in our lives. Amen? But apart from people, we also need to submit to God's word. There is something that God has spoken over your life regarding your success, regarding your soaring this year. We need to submit to this, that word. And you shall experience what? Soaring. I pray that we may have the same attitude that Mary had, that you find in the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 38, when it comes to God's word. Luke chapter 1 and verse 38, it says, And Mary said, 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Amen? I pray that that will be whatever God has instructed and you have the word of God, submit to it. And you shall experience what? The lifting that all of us are looking forward to. I pray that the word of God will be so authoritative in our lives that we will we'll start bearing 30-fold, 60-fold, and even 100-fold of what? Fruits in our lives. But is it authoritative? I think that is what we need to ask ourselves, even as Isaiah 53 and verse 1 says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Do we believe the word of God? Is it authoritative? We need to submit to the authority of God's word and even to the authorities that God have put in our midst or in our lives. Number four, we need to submit to the ordinances of God. The ordinances of God. The God that we serve, the God that we call Lord, is a God of order. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40, you know, the Corinthians church were these liberal believers, Christians. They were fleshy people. They would engage in many things. And so one of the instructions by Apostle Paul, you can find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in what? Order. Amen? The God that we serve is a God of order. He has, him being Lord, he orders things in a certain way. You can't just get to him. There's a way in which he has prescribed. And because he is Lord, his word is final. And there are orderings of God that God has given us as believers. Some of them in mention, I can just mention, um, we have been ordered by God to observe the Holy Communion. That is not optional. It's for every believer. Do this in remembrance of me. That's an ordinance. We've been ordered to only experience love in holy matrimony. See, come we stay. And you'll be ordering many things that will come with that. But holy matrimony is the order of God. He has ordered that we pray at all times. That is an ordinance that we need to. He has also ordered that we fellowship. Do not forsake the assembly of Christians or believers. That is an order. But he has also ordered us to witness. He or she uh, missions department. We've been ordered to be lights and salt to the world. We need to observe these ordinances in order for us to excel or even so. Let me point out two illustrations in the Bible, in the Old Testament, of people who do not observe God's order. One of it is King Saul. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 21, and as we go down to verse 23, we find a story where King Saul is coming against the Amalekites, and God orders him to kill everything and not take every, any, anything from that. But in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 21, the Bible says, but the people took this, uh, of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord uh, thy God in Gilgal. Then this was the consequence of not observing God's order. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, 
He hath also rejected thee from being king. My prayer is that we are, at the end of this year, we are not rejected of the Lord because we do not observe his ordinances. Ordinances come before our sorrow. I pray that we may not lose favor and our kingship as Saul did. But I want to take you to also another passage of scripture. And this we find also in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 22. It speaks of the parable of the great feast. Many of us remember that story. Jesus was likening the feast as us entering the kingdom of God or heaven. And so the story goes, there was a king who threw a big party for his son, a big wedding party, and he invited all his subjects and his friends, especially the people close to him. But the Bible says they decided not to because they were busy somewhere else. And so he was furious. And so he said, okay, go to the streets and call whoever you find there in the byways, wherever, get to them there and welcome them to be party of the big party that I'm throwing. And people came and it is said that the, the place was filled. And this is a big, big, big feast, wedding feast. And so, while the wedding feast is going on, the master decides to walk around, you know, to meet the people who has come, who, who has been invited. He's just having his own good time. And then he observes and he notices there's a man who is not dressed in the wedding attire or the appropriate attire. And so he commands um, his soldiers to promptly get him out. And many of us may ask ourselves, this guy was not supposed even to be here in the first place. Sinukweli. He was invited. Why then throw him out? Because he wasn't dressed properly. But you know, whenever Jesus uses a parable, he's speaking of some deep truths here. You know, the parable speaks of all of us. Many of us have been called into the kingdom of God by grace. We did not deserve to be in that party called the kingdom of God. But many of us, after receiving salvation, we want to dress whichever way we want. And by dressing, I mean character. And a time is coming when the master of the ceremony will come and walk around and will throw any of us who is not fit or has not observed decorum. Amen? I pray that we observe the order, the order that has been put, the ordinances, the order that God has set. Even the way we conduct our worship, there is a way in which God has ordained how worship ought to be. That we never just enter worship unless we have observed words, repentance and forgiveness. There are many of us that we will miss our soaring this year just because we did not observe the order of God. But lastly, let us submit to the leading of the Spirit. Let us observe the leading of the Spirit. Romans 8 and verse 13, the Bible says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. God has called us to submit to the leading of His Spirit. And many times, you would want to react. I don't know how many, how many at times, and I might be saying it lightly, but it really means so much to God that it can cost your very um, own success and even your life sometimes. There are many times as believers, we are tempted to react and not respond the way God would want us to respond. 
Remember, all of us exist on earth to represent and reflect the glory of God. Every time, as a believer, you are a witness unto God. People look at you and they learn something about God. So when you conduct yourself not as led as the Spirit, guess what? You're tarnishing the name of God. And he takes that personal. There are many times, um, uh, for many of us who, who, who got saved way back, we'll remember um, Christians will say, uh, or brethren will say, I was tempted to give a brother a fivefold ministry. You know, it, 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 your, your, your hand has five fingers. So when you, when you clench your fist, that is fivefold ministry. Not the fivefold ministry we know in the, in, the, in the Bible where we have the apostle, we have the teacher, we have the pastor, we have the evangelist. No, this is flesh. There are times when you'll be aggravated, and boy, don't I know that. Um, my wife and I serve young people, and there are times they can get on your nerves, you know, and you're tempted to give them what? <laughs> but then you remember, you remember you are there to represent God. Amen? You remember that time when um, Moses was really aggravated, and he was supposed to speak to a stone, and instead, in anger, he hit the stone. And for that reason, he could not see the promised land. Amen? I pray that we be led by the Spirit and not by our own flesh. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. For those of us maybe who may be asking ourselves, so what is it being led by the Spirit? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, it offers us a list of the manifestations of those who are being led by the Spirit. This is what they manifest. They manifest the fruit of the Spirit, and there are nine of them. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance or self-control. Notice each and every one of the manifestations there is a form of submission. We can go through that list. You see, love is not emotional when it comes to God. Love is a command. That's why God will, Jesus will tell us, love your, na your neighbors, but also love your what? Your enemies. Do you think you feel nice loving your enemies? No, it's a command. It's something we do. Look at joy. Joy is not happiness. Joy means you are content even when the situation around you is not favorable. But you're joyous. That is submission. And many of us as Christians, including ministers, some of us, you see us here glowing, but we just have the joy of the Lord because we are enduring some some things in life, but it's not for us to show the whole world how we are beaten by the world. Amen? We have joy. We are submitted in joy. Look at peace. You know, things can be a whole lot of turmoil around you, but you have the peace of God that surpasses what? All understanding. And you can be composed. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, but I want to also touch the word meekness, which I will finish with it. You remember the passage of scripture where I read one of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5.5? 5, 5? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is controlled power. I could do this, but I won't, because I'm submitted. Amen? That is what Jesus was agonizing at Gethsemane. He was saying, I, I can do away with this cross, but imagine what? I won't. That was controlled power. I pray that we be led by the Spirit so that we can manifest this, the fruit of the Spirit. And God promises when we do this, we will indeed sow. 
But even having mentioned the areas of submission, I want to mention in closing, there is a limitation to submission. There is a limitation to submission. We do not submit to anything and anyone. We only submit to God and the things of God. Amen? You see, the Bible, um, the, the, the theme scripture says, and they that wait upon the Lord, not any, not any friend, not any situation, but that which is of God or God himself, that is what we ought to submit to. And we need to know that there are limitations to submission because many of us are enduring in the name of sub submitting. If the authority is not of God, iyo ni yako. Iyo ni ile unasema pambana na hali yako. God is not there. So there are limitations. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and also Romans 12 verse 2 gives us what we ought to submit to and a disclaimer to that which we ought not to. Romans 12 chapter uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That, that's where submission is. Holy, acceptable unto who? God. Which is your reasonable service or worship. Then Romans 12, 2 is where the disclaimer is or the limitation to submission. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? We ought not to conform to the trends, the functions, the, the things of this world. And this is slightly creeping even into the church. You know, the way we conduct our worship, the way we conduct our sermons, we are preaching things that are not of God. And we are saying we are still submitted to God. God does not acknowledge that. We need only to submit. So there is limitation to submission. Another good example is Prophet Daniel. And you find this in the book of Daniel chapter 9. That whole chapter. And I need to give context to this so that you understand. You know, I had mentioned earlier one, one of the areas we need to submit is the seasons of God that have been ordained. Well, in this particular situation or context, Daniel is interceding on behalf of the Israelites who are in captivity. Because while he was checking the books, he discovered they are not supposed to be in captivity. The 70 years are done. And they were not supposed to be there. So he is interceding that God may deliver them. Why is it instructive for us? You know, many of us can say, man, I'm still waiting on God. Miaka nenda miaka rudi. You're still waiting on God. I have been patient on God. And maybe God finished his season way, way back. We need to check the books. We need to check our lives. We need to hear from the Spirit and know whether we have been on this mountain for too long and we need to take off. And so there are some seasons in life we will have to contend in prayer and intercession. Amen? Not just submit to any season and say, I'm submitted to this season. Check whether that season is of God. You see, even Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Do you know that? After baptism, the Bible says, and the Spirit led him into the wilderness. He did not choose his testing, his seasons. But once, and as I read, Ecclesiastes says, there is time to every season and purpose under the earth. So not all seasons, all seasons, check whether God is still calling us to submit in any season. And if it's not, then we need to be to contend with such situations that they may change. 
Another example is the three Hebrew boys. Simnawajua. Again, allow me just to use their, 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 their the names that they were given. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel 3.16, we find a king, Nebuchadnezzar. He's an authority. And he had given an order that people should worship his image, a golden image that he had created. And this is what these Hebrew boys say in Daniel 3, 16 and 17 to 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I wonder what is it that is making us want to bow down in worship and not give ourselves to the devotion of God? Is it sickness? Is it corruption? In order for you to get, remember I told you there's a way in which God has ordained our success. What is it that we are bowing down to? Is it mediocrity? Are we bowing down to um, doing less at the expense of being excellent? What is it? Are there ambitions that we are having to give up? When beginning the year we had big goals and now you have assessed the economy You've assessed situations in life and you're saying, maybe God just wants me to settle for only this. What is it that is compelling us to bow down? I pray that you only bow down to God and what God has said. Lastly, and regardless, because you remember the story of the Hebrew boys, they were put in a fiery furnace and it was heated seven times. And many of us, even in our seasons right now, before our soaring, things may be heated up. Things might get so bad. But I pray that we only bow down to who? The Lord and Savior of our lives. Lastly, as I conclude, as I conclude, I want us to appreciate the promise and reward of submission. God doesn't just call us to submit for nothing. The reward and promise of any submission that is God-ordained is exaltation. Amen? There is a resurrection. There is a rising after the Gethsemane moment. Whatever God is asking you to submit to, please do, because immediately after that, there will be a soaring. And that's why I titled my message, Soaring through what? Submission. Isaiah 40 and verse 31, the latter part of it, after you have submitted in patience to the Lord, the Bible says, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And therein, you know, not just inherit the kingdom of God, but the earth. God is saying the things around you, good jobs, whatever is of the earth, you shall inherit it. And by the way, when, when, when all is said and done, we won't go to heaven and stay in heaven. Heaven is coming on earth. Amen? Amen. If you read Revelations, then I saw a new heaven um, coming down. Heaven will be here, and our GEO keeps telling us that he, he, he's working so hard, maybe um, he will be able to own the whole of Embakasi. You know? And there is truth to that, because there is no heaven up there. 
Heaven is coming on earth. And those who are meek, those who are submitted, who have controlled power, will inherit what? The earth. Psalms chapter 30 and verse 5 says, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his, fa uh, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You may be weeping in your submission, but there is guaranteed promise that there is joy coming in the morning. Amen? First Peter chapter 4 and verse 13, But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering or submissions, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, Humble yourself therefore unto under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I want to finish this by saying, we've spoken, I pray that you have appreciated that there is a precondition to our soaring, and that precondition is submission. And it's not an option. If all of us believe in the superscription that is written up here, which is Jesus is Lord, and he is Lord, then you will appreciate something else. That God is not asking us to submit. You either submit willfully in worship and experience soaring, or you will be forced to submit, even as Philippians 2 and verse 10, 11 says, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess, shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I don't know where you are today, but my message today was to do two things. One, to encourage you that the way that precedes our soaring is submission. Take heart. But also to instruct you that there isn't any other way to our soaring unless we submit. I pray that these words will remain in you and that you'll be submitted to the ordinances of God, to the seasons of God, to the things that God has called, the order that God has already set out for us so that we all can experience the lifting and the rising. Let's rise to our feet. I want all of us just to meditate even as I welcome our, our resident pastor to finish just meditate on what it will take for you this year if we are anticipating and waiting on God for our soaring, whatever that soaring means to you. I pray that we shall be able, able to submit in order for us to be lifted up. Pastor. Amen.